Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we are reviewing the Nufi New Type F1. Is this the first low profile 60% keyboard? No, it's not. Cooler Master has done one before, but today we have a really cool, unique, one of a kind, low profile 60% keyboard that comes with a ton of cool accessories. And it's called the Nufi New Type F1. So that's quite a mouthful, but today we'll see, is it worth it? We'll see, coming up. All right, just a disclaimer, they did offer to send this to me for review and I said yes because a lot of you guys happen to like low profile keyboards and you really don't agree with the fact that I don't like low profile keyboards, but I am willing to give them a try, review it. This review is not sponsored, obviously, so let's just jump into what's in the box. So we're gonna jump to the keyboard last, but of course in the box you get a nice manual and it looks really good. It explains what the different lights are, what the different buttons do, things like that. So check that out. We also get some stickers and this has the Nufi mascot here and also some stickers here. Always nice to have stickers. And this is a unique one. We get a little poster as well of the Nufi mascot and she looks very anime-esque. She's got her little low profile switches floating over there. You know, if you're into this kind of stuff, you can definitely hang it on your wall. And inside a little case, we have a plastic keycap puller. I'm not a fan of those. Honestly, for this board, you're not even gonna need it. You have a little USB-C to USB-C little connector cable, and it's about five inches, so it's great if you're just doing board to laptop right on top of each other. And then we have a regular USB-C rubber cable here and it's quite long. Onto the really good stuff. You have a carrying case here. Reminds me of Herschel, the backpack or bag company. It's got a clasp on top via button. And it's got a sewn in little logo thing here. So we'll open that up. And it's also similar to like the old magnetic iPad cases. So it is magnetic. The keyboard connects onto it like so, and you can just pull it straight off. So that is the carrying case. It's pretty fancy. I would say it's super fancy. I haven't seen anything like this so far in any of these reviews. So onto the board, as you can see, super, super duper low profile, lightweight, super portable. We'll start with the back. So on the back, there's a metal branding kind of thing. And this is where the magnet connects to the case. You also have this rubber orange bottom. And this is really nice because the plan for this keyboard is to put it on top of your laptop. And this is the main keyboard. And then you type on this rather than typing on your actual laptop keyboard. So this is gonna protect your original keycaps on your board. The line here and the T's here are to fit it in between your keycaps and keep it from moving around. And it's designed to match with a MacBook board. On the left side of the board, we have the USB-C charging port and it is flush with the board. We also have the on off switch. Initially, I had no idea what it was because well, there's no inscribing or anything here telling you what it is. You have to go to the manual. So it is wired off then Bluetooth. And there's three positions here. If you turn on Bluetooth, it'll turn on. So that is it for the case. The case is made of plastic here and with a rubber bottom. So that's it for the sides and the top. On, on the front here, we also have some indicator lights. 
The first indicator of light is whether it needs to be charged or charging. The second one, I believe, is if it's connected to profile one and then profile two and three. So it'll tell you what it's connected to when it's using Bluetooth. So onto the layout. We've sort of seen this layout in other boards such as the GK64 or the Blitzwolf and other boards like that where it's a 60% board, but they advertise having dedicated arrow keys. So they toss it on the right corner and then move another key to some strange location. And in this case, they move the right shift outside of the arrow. So it moves one U to the right. And some people may be okay with this. Personally, I cannot use this. I absolutely hate that. And that's because I use both shifts. I don't only use left shift. Jake is completely fine with this because he exclusively only used left shift. If you're one of those people, this layout isn't gonna bother you too much. All right, another thing, if you're a Apple Magic Keyboard user, this is gonna look completely normal to you, but the bottom row is different than what I'm used to because I'm a Windows user. The leftmost key here is FN, then control and then option and command. And I'm used to having control as the farthest key because I'm so used to doing like control T, control R, control W, V, C, all those things. But now when I find myself using the board, I'm accidentally pressing FN a lot more often and having to rethink that, hey, control is right next to that, not that key. So there's a few problems here already, but if you exclusively use left shift and you're a MacBook user, all this probably looks pretty normal. So you may really like it. On to a few other things that I may have a problem with. So there are some really good things here. It is Mac and Windows compatible. The main legends are gonna be the Mac compatible keys. So option and command, option and command. But when you wanna use Windows, the keys are just right underneath. So we have start, alt. The keyboard has a feature where you can switch the option and command keys if you want and that may make it easier for you to use it may not i never used those keys in the first place so i don't i don't use those things we got a small tiny one u delete here rather than taking up the entire space for what backspace could have been so there are some layout issues there are some other layout issues that you should probably know about before you make a decision to buy this board and that is there are no secondary functions for things like home insert n page up page down delete any of those are just not on this board and i'm not sure why they didn't consider that because it it is a 60 percent board but people still use some of those other keys i guess because it's meant to be paired with a macbook or a surface book those boards don't have those keys anyways, and this is a board that resembles those keyboards. Those are my layout problems with this board, but overall, it's super sturdy. No flex, no creaks, no anything. Onto the keycaps. So the keycaps are ABS plastic. They're double shot. They are super thin, and they connect to low-profile kale chalk switches, which don't have that normal cross-shaped stem. It has the two-prong stem, and the reason I said that you didn't need the keycap puller is you just, you just pull them off with your nails. Obviously, you have to be careful not to break some of the stems in these keycaps because they seem pretty fragile and they're pretty thin. But if you use a keycap puller, you're going to scratch the keycap. So just, just don't do that. You can use a wire keycap puller if you want or because there's space between each keycap, just pull them off. So they're extremely flat, it's entirely uniform. Reminds me of those chiclet keys. And at first, you know, it's not very comfortable to type on if you're not used to it. If you are coming from the laptop board, it's probably like secondhand nature to you and easy to use. But they are flimsy and they do develop some shine and you gotta make sure your fingers are completely clean before using them. I already have a few things going on on D and space. It's a non-standard layout, but alongside that, it's a non-standard keycap stem. So, you know, you're not gonna have a lot of luck finding replacement keycaps for these. Take care of them. Newfie does sell different replacement keycaps in different colors, so you can check them out if you're interested. There are sub-legends here for RGB, 
for editing the lighting and then for the Mac and Windows. And that's about it. The manual does have some additional things such as to check battery status and then the number row, you can keep it to the function row only or you can choose it to be numbers depending on what option you do choose. But other than that, there are no special navigational secondary functions. There's no media secondary functions. As for RGB, they look really good. The legends are super clean, really nice in dim lighting and at night. And the font looks very professional. You can definitely take this to your classroom, study groups, libraries, when that happens, and just anywhere, but onto the switches because they can be a little bit loud. So there's three switch types of low profile kale chalk switches that they offer. I have the brown here, they are slightly tactile. They also offer them in red and white. So white is a clicky one, red is a linear one. These are relatively quiet compared to their full size mechanical switch counterparts, but they can get a little bit noisy. If you're interested in reading more about these switches, I'll link to the spec sheets of each one down below. So you can check that out and read that if you want to. So we have the brown switches here and they are tactile. There is a bump, but due to the profile nature of the switch, I don't really see a point in having a bump. I pretty much have to bottom out every key press anyways. There are some issues that I have with the overall typing experience. Sometimes if I hit a key on the corner, or somewhere not in the middle or with not enough force, the key isn't going to press down and actuate. So I do get typos occasionally. It's very similar to my experience with Keychron low profile keyboards and it's you need to hit them correctly for it to work properly. So in that case, I'm gonna recommend trying out the linear, linear switch if you're gonna get this board at all. So onto the stabilizers. The stabilizers have a cross-shaped stem, so they're designed to fit into their strange keycaps. And the stabilizers don't really do much here. They add an additional clicky noise when you press on them, and they just keep the key from teeter-tottering or wobbling around but you can hear here that the spacebar adds an additional click when I click on it. So that noise is probably the loudest in all the board. The rest of the board is pretty quiet unless you're slamming on each key, which is what I have to do to type fast and properly. Some additional features of the board that makes it really cool is that it's Bluetooth. You just turn it on by sliding the orange switch and it can connect up to three devices. I think it's Bluetooth 5.0. The manual isn't very clear on what Bluetooth it is. There's different levels of brightness with the RGB. You can change it on the board. And probably the coolest part is the magnetic carrying case. It's super stylish. It looks good and it's really professional. It does add quite a little bit of weight because of the magnetic part though. So the verdict, it's not for me, but it is really cool. The unboxing experience was really fun. I really liked their stylish case here. I had a fun time looking through the stickers and the poster and being like, eh, I'm probably not gonna use that, but it's cool that they thought about it, you know? So it's very portable. I love the idea of using a separate keyboard for your laptop but I wouldn't recommend putting it on top of the board. I would just like put it in front and then raise the stand for your laptop so that it could be at a good monitor height. And then your board can be at a correct angle for your hands. So that's what I would recommend. But if you do find your sp yourself lacking the space, then putting something like this on top of your board is okay too. But that's not a good position for your neck or your arms and shoulders and wrists. So it's really up to you. It's cool though, for the price of $110, it's definitely quite an experience, but some of those layout things are just really hard to get used to for me and make it unusable. I press the up arrow almost way too much and exclusively using the left shift for me really significantly slows me down in my writing. The typing test is gonna be at the end. As you can see, my typing speed is significantly slower at about, about 50% of my usual words per minute. 
Some changes I would make is if it was just the regular 60% layout, add more secondary functions here, it'd be great. Or if they just decide to make it a 65%, bam, that is a winning kind of product. So maybe we'll see that in the future, but it is a little bit expensive and it's not the most functional for me. So if you wanna check it out, it's available on the Newfi website linked down below. And check out our best 60% mechanical keyboards of 2020. So I'll link that right there. And of course our low profile playlist for different low profile keyboards that I reviewed as well, if you wanna check that out. Also, tell me what you think about this board. I'm curious. I have a certain desire for specific kinds of boards and that makes it so I'm very picky about boards like this where the layout is strange and it's really not for me, but for Mac users, I can understand that the, the layout may be something more familiar to you. So just comment down below, tell me what you think. Am I being too harsh? So, okay, I'm done rambling. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.